For centuries, people have noticed the resemblance between parents and offspring in different organisms. About 150 years ago, a monk named Gregor Mendel took a closer look at these patterns of inheritance by studying peas that he grew in the monastery's garden. By crossing plants with a distinct characteristic, for example, a tall plant and a short plant, he noticed something interesting. All plants of the first generation were tall. When these plants of the first generation were self-pollinated, however, a three-to-one pattern arose in the second generation. Three tall plants for one short plant. He came to the understanding that certain characteristics, or traits, of the plant dominated others. They are called dominant traits, and they mask other traits, the so-called recessive traits. When a certain trait follows the inheritance patterns of Mendel, we talk about Mendelian inheritance. Mendelian inheritance can be seen in all sexually reproducing organisms. In humans, only a minority of all traits follow a Mendelian inheritance pattern, and they are often seen in the form of Mendelian disorders. Since one gene is involved, they are also called monogenic disorders. Mendelian disorders are rare. They arise as a consequence of carrying one or two copies of a rare genetic variant, also known as an allele, that is disease-causing. Like we discussed previously, such a rare variant is harmful when they have a big consequence for the function of a gene, thereby causing the disease. Persons with two different copies of an allele, such as a normal copy and a genetic variant, are called heterozygotes. When persons carry two of the same copies of a genetic allele, they are called homozygotes. For some disorders, being a heterozygote is enough to cause the disorder. When this is the case, the disorder is inherited in a dominant manner. And if the disease-causing variant is located on one of the 22 autosomes, the inheritance is autosomal dominant. Looking at a family tree of an autosomal dominant disorder, for example, Huntington's disease, we observe the following characteristics. The disorder is present in all generations, as an affected individual has at least one affected parent. There is thus a vertical pattern visible. Furthermore, males and females are equally affected, and since one allele causes disease, the chance is about 50% that the disorder is passed on from the affected parent. When a disorder only develops if someone is a homozygote for a genetic variant, the disorder is inherited in a recessive manner. And when the affected gene is located on the autosomes, it is called an autosomal recessive disorder. Heterozygotes are carriers of the genetic variant that don't get the disease themselves, but may pass it on to the next generation. They are called asymptomatic carriers. Recessive disorders can also be caused by two different allelic variants that lead to two wrong copies of the gene. This is called compound heterozygous recessive inheritance. Let's take a look at a family tree of an autosomal recessive disorder. For example, sickle cell disease. Both males and females are equally affected, but unlike a dominant inheritance pattern, an affected individual does not need to have an affected parent. The disorder often affects a whole generation, displaying a horizontal pattern in the family. The risk that a subsequent child will inherit the disorder from parents that are both asymptomatic carriers is two times 50%, which is a recurrence risk of 25%. 
Some disorders are caused by genetic variants on the sex chromosomes. These sex-linked disorders can both be dominant and recessive. In contrast to the autosomal disorders, sex-linked disorders do not equally affect males and females because of the difference in sex chromosomes. For X-linked recessive disorders, such as Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, only males with a disease-causing variant are affected, as they only have one copy of the X chromosome. Furthermore, affected males never pass the disorder to their sons, while all daughters will be unaffected carriers. Therefore, a horizontal pattern may be visible in the family tree. A female carrier has a 50% chance to have an affected son or a daughter that is a carrier. In contrast, X-linked dominant disorders affect both males and females, though they are seen more often in females as a result of spontaneous miscarriages of male fetuses. A vertical pattern is therefore visible with affected persons in every generation. Affected males are guaranteed to pass the affected allele to their daughters, but have no affected sons. Affected females have a 50% chance that either a son or daughter will be affected. Finally, mitochondrial disorders are strictly transmitted from mother to child, as the mitochondrial DNA of the embryo originates from the egg cell of the mother. Mendelian disorders are thus caused by one or two disease-causing variants that have big effects on the function of the gene. In the next video, we will discuss why variants are potentially so damaging that disease may arise.